Campbell Alton. Connor Madison. Major Cough. <clears throat> Trevor Matera. Nick Campion. And Don Clement Alton. Uh, Kristen Murphy, Conservation and Sustainability Planner for the town. Okay. Do we have any public comment for non agenda items? No, seeing none, we'll move to our first action item, which is a wetland conditional use permit application for Unitil to remove an above ground meter station and decommission a section of, of natural gas pipe between Kingston Road and Heritage Way. Construction vehicle access to the work area will require temporary impact to wetlands within that corridor. So do we have uh, applicants. Good evening. My name is Steve Herzog. I am a wetland scientist with Wood Environment Infrastructure representing Unitil. And I understand several members of the commission uh, attended a site walk recently. I was not on that walk, but Chuck Lyman, who is our certified wetland scientist, was on the walk. So the project is fairly straightforward. Unitil has a what they call a lateral, which is a short segment of transmission pipeline that leads from their interstate gas pipeline to Kingston Road. And they are going to decommission that section of pipe, it's no longer needed, and to access the equipment at either end of that lateral, they have to traverse through their easement, which crosses three wetlands. The impacts will be temporary. They'll be placing uh, timber mats across those wetlands. During the dry period, they're planning to do the work in August, and <clears throat> upon removal of those timber mats, the, the work will take a couple of weeks at most. They will reseed and, and mulch, if necessary, the areas where the timber mats were placed. So we're requesting uh, this conditional use permit application to allow that temporary <coughs> impact. And that's it in a nutshell. I'd be happy to answer questions or go through any details of the project if you like. Do we have any, maybe before we go through the conditions, is there any, who went on the site walk and do we have any comments from the site walk? I thought it, it's pretty laid out, pretty straight. Uh, they, they go through a couple of wetlands which were probably left over from the brickyard uh, and uh, they're gonna mat the whole thing when they do it. I thought it was okay. I didn't. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, you can, based on the plan here, it was, it was pretty straightforward where it's coming off of um, 111 here and just a straight corridor back. Um, the, th the three wetlands there were just sort of just based on, you know, low points in a, in a basically a dirt corridor. Um, there was one spot in that center of pool where there were some uh, some tadpoles that we we took a look at, and I think they were going to do a, a survey on what those were yes. just to identify them. Yes, and uh, Charles Lyman, CWS, believes they were either green frog or pickerel frog. <coughs> they were not wood frog because they did not they were not light in color, and didn't have the copper flecking characteristic of wood frogs. And even though it is in the wood frog breeding season, it's very late, so it would be highly unlikely to see wood frogs. And they were not salamanders because they had no external gills. So he believes they're a green frog or pickerel frog tadpoles. How would that information affect our decision? Well, I would think only as far as their timing. I mean, as long as they don't put the mats down when the frogs are there, which is only early right. spring. So wood frog is a species of concern. But in any case, the tadpoles, we would, we would <laughs> prefer not to put the timber mats down and kill any tadpoles. But the work will be done in August, so the, pond, the ponded areas will likely be dry by then, and the tadpoles will certainly have matured. Mr. Chair, can I ask a couple of questions? Yeah. I, I wasn't at the site walk, but two questions. Uh, one, how long will it take to complete the work? One. There has to be in a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks. Three weeks. And two, what happens to the easements, to the easement? They intend to maintain the easement. So the easement will stay, Unitil will still have the easement? Yes, yes. Okay, it'll be maintained. Yes. By maintain, what does that mean? Will it go and cut it or just? They periodically mow it. I don't mow, mow it. their schedule. Every few years, they mow it. Okay. And since you mentioned that, I will bring this up, I was going to bring it up at the end. 
there is a possibility they will want to use that easement in the future and make a permanent access way. And so th this is not in consideration right now, but it's an easy way to get to their pipeline. And so they thought it might be a good idea to mention to the commission that you might see us again in a few years, at which time there's a possibility they would pr propose to improve that, uh, that access way by making a, a drivable road. So that means they would have to have some wetland fill, some uh, culverting or bridging of these wetlands or some such thing. But that's not being contemplated right now. But I mention it because it's, it's possible to be, that we'll be here in the future. And I would ask if you think that would be permissible and what your conditions might be that we could account for that in, say, in a couple of years if we come before you again. Yeah, I think we'd have to deal with that when, the, when you have, we actually have plans or okay. are, are ready to do that. I mean, we have nothing before us. You have nothing to present in terms of, right. you know, impacts or culverts or anything else. So I, mm. I don't think it's germane to this particular okay. uh, application you're giving to me. Right tonight. Not my opinion. I don't know how it works. Thank you. Are there, there are other questions, comments? Follow up on that? Uh, I guess it's significant to note that the area across the street, across Kingston Road, where the, the pipes are coming up, that, that I don't know what you, exactly the technical term for what that location is, but that will all be removed, is what we were told on the sidewalk, revegetated. Right. Um, the asphalt will come out of there. Oh, by so, Kingston Road, yeah, where this, so this is, is it a pressure station or right down uh, here? Yeah. They call it an MNR station, metering and regulating station. Yes, and that will be removed. And that will be revegetated. Re but the, yeah. along the corridor, the, you're not removing the pipe and ground. There's no digging within no, the wetland no. areas. It's just access to, access, right, to, to that. remove the stations at either end. And if I understand correctly, they will fill the pipe with grout, but it will not be dug up. Other. Well, no, if we have no comments, I'll make a motion that we uh, have no objection to the approval of this conditional use permit as proposed. I, I take it I'm voting and Don's voting. Make a full um, seven. We have seven members here, so if, if everyone would be able to vote, that, that would be right. favorable. Well, so I lay the um, motion on the table. Okay. I'll second it for discussion. <laughs> okay. Do we didn't go through the individual oh. um, art conditions? I I don't know that we need to. In this case, I'd weigh that and for this mess of this felt is really. I. Yeah, I think this is the, the way that it has to be done. I mean, I guess. I think it would be helpful to document that you're satisfied that their response. Yeah, the our satisfies response. meet. I think we are satisfied that the proposed um, use is permitted within <coughs> this district, and that there's not an alternative access to do this work. Um, and there, there are just temporary impacts. If there, if there are, you know, coming back for long-term impacts, there would be have to be more discussion about the impacts to the vernal pools that are, or the vernal pool singular that is, would be, would be part of this and is listed um, as a temporary impact. But my my only thing would be, do we? They've stated it's done in October, but should we add a condition that? To, 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 to condition it upon the work being completed in, um, did I say October? I meant August. It's August, yeah. Um, that the work be completed in the dry season because <coughs> as we know, things sometimes get mm -hmm. delayed. Um, Maybe so. by the end of the year, we'll let them have November also if it, they needed to. Oh. So is, is there any permanent impact in this project? No. No okay. permanent wetland oh, impact. Oh, I, I must no. be looking at the wrong. <clears throat> Whatever. What are you looking at over there? 
Are we doing a cup? Page I'm sorry. seven of the meeting packet has the yep, sorry, I was the, on the, the wrong numbers. One. Yep, yep. Got it. Thank you. There it is. Yep. Um, so during this work, is anybody monitoring it? Pardon? Is anybody monitoring this work for like erosion or any wetland monitor? We did not have one intended, no. <clears throat> We're anticipating there will not be any erosional impacts because they'll be laying timber mats and not digging up or driving through the wet areas. Okay, does anyone, awesome. should we, um, if we can let the, the uh, motion stay as proposed unless someone feels otherwise. I don't know that we need to condition it upon the time of year. Um, so that may, may complicate things for everyone. And uh, I think Bill said as presented, right? Yeah, okay. So as it was presented in the, the dry period. All right, so I'm good with that. Sorry for the confusion. Did anyone second it? It was seconded, I seconded it. by... Cool. Any other comments before we vote? No. Okay. So all those in favor of this wetland conditional use permit, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. The motion passes seven to zero. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we will, again, we're recommending, so we will draft a, a letter to the planning board for that they recommend approval of the conditional wetland conditional use permit. Okay, so up next we have the wetland, another wetland project. We have a wetland conditional use permit application and the, the state uh, NHDES standard dredge and fill wetland permit application uh, for the construction of a 95,000 square foot industrial warehouse building located at 19 Continental Drive in Exeter. We did a site walk um, for this earlier this evening at five um, and there were several members of the commission present. Um, so I guess we'll turn it over to the applicant who's here to present on this topic and then I guess let's go through the conditional use permit first and then the state permit. Um, in our packet, where does this start? Uh, point, of, point of order, Mr. Chair. Yep. Uh, this is a wetlands application. Correct. Yep. So I think we, we we should actually be doing that first, and then come back to the CUP, because this presentation is for New Hampshire State of New Hampshire wetlands application. So I think maybe that ought to be our first action as opposed to our second one. Again, that's my thoughts. Sure. Um, you can do the direct. We can do the direct impacts first, and then. And are we? Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Because uh, much of what we determine in the wetlands application Check will the wind up being is the conditions for the CUP, the cup, the CUP, yeah, uh, the conditional use permit. Sure. Doesn't doesn't much change things. All right, Bre Brendan, you're gonna kick this off. Yes, I think I will. Um, <clears throat> thank you very much. Uh, for the record, Brendan Quigley. I'm a certified wetland scientist with Gove Environmental uh, right here in Exeter. Uh, we're, we're here on behalf of uh, Glurups, and I, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, they are a shoe manu specialty shoe manufacturer uh, that's <clears throat> looking to develop a, a warehouse um, facility at 19 Continental Drive, uh, where we had the site walk this afternoon. Um, I think I can get this out. As, uh, as promised, I'll start off with just a, um, 
a quick overview of where it is because uh, there's kind of a lot going on in this area and it this you know we, we did talk about this at the site walk uh, 19 Continental is located here at the end of Continental Drive um, <clears throat> the existing cul-de-sac uh, the the property is uh, configured um, so that there's this long uh, dog leg that actually wraps around 15 and 11, I believe. Uh, coming back to Continental Drive where the, there is a lease space for existing cell tower. Uh, that part of the property has a lot of wetlands as well as some 100-year um, floodplain and isn't usable uh, to access this site. Uh, so there, there's nothing proposed for that portion of the property. Uh, the entire development's taking place um, on sort of the main portion of the lot where access will be provided uh, through an existing easement uh, from number 15, uh, which is directly adjacent and is the only active driveway currently uh, on the cul-de-sac at the end of Continental. Um, of course, number 24 Continental lies just uh, to the west and Surrounding uh, the entire uh, Garrison Glen subdivision, uh, as well as abutting a good portion of the property, is the Little River Conservation Area, which is a collection of a number of different um, parcels with slightly different conservation um, measures uh, or, or means, but they're uh, together, <coughs> shown on this this map is green. So that, and and of course, uh, Epping Road and Exit Nine on 101. So that's that's where we are um, on uh, on the map, so to speak. So the the proposed um, building, uh, 95,116 square feet. Um, is shown here on this map. Uh, the colors that you're looking at uh, would, in sort of this uh, orangish color, are the buffer impacts, which I, I suppose we'll talk about specifically when we get to the CUP uh, discussion. Um, for the state wetland application, as well as for the CUP, we have a number of direct wetland impacts, which are shown in blue. Uh, together, those total uh, 9,540 feet currently, there was a slight reduction uh, from the initial application, uh, which was for 9,900. Uh, and those are incurred uh, at, mostly at the periphery of the, of the central portion of the site, which is where the uplands are, um, as well as a number of <clears throat> finger-like extensions that come up from the main wetland. These are generally a little bit drier type of wetland, a um, little bit more difficult to recognize as a wetland, uh, whereas the wetland that surrounds pretty much the rest of the property is, um, it's, it's what you see a little more, more of a, a classic wetland, and that extends down to uh, the Little River eventually. Um, so as you can see, wetlands do pretty much surround the entire property except for where uh, there's already existing development on 15. Um, we also have a uh, vernal pool, which is located uh, in sort of in between. It's, it's on the property, but in between number 15 and um, and the existing extension off of uh, Continental, which is intended to serve uh, adjacent 24. Uh, and this. The access will be proposed, like I said, through an existing easement. Uh, this is really the least uh, impacts that could be, you know, this is the easiest way to, to access the property with the least amount of wetland impacts. Um, so that necessitates some impact here to this uh, small, this is like a swale-like feature that crosses the easement. We'll be constructing a access around the building with some associated parking areas and a number of stormwater management features which are uh, located in uplands as, as is required um, at the periphery of, of the development. 
So at uh, 9,548 square feet, um, we have submitted the wetlands application for that impact. Um, there's a lot of information in that state application, which I'd be happy to answer any questions on. Um, some There's a considerable overlap, too, with uh, the concepts that are required uh, to be addressed in the, uh, in the ordinance for the CUP application as well. So uh, we can probably touch on, on both of those at the same time. Of course, as far as actions go, we'd be looking for a, uh, a favorable rec recommendation to uh, Department of Environmental Services um, regarding the, uh, the application. I neglected to mention, um, to minimize wetland impacts, we are including uh, several retaining walls, uh, as well as steep grading uh, wherever is possible. Um, in order to keep those wetland impacts uh, to a minimum. And you can see with these fingers extending into the, uh, what was conceived to be the developable portion of the site when the subdivision was created, it would be very difficult to do much on this property without, um, you know, without a similar wetland impact. This is the, the type of use that was uh, envisioned for this area. Uh, it's appropriately zoned for it, uh, and I think it, a good location for, for this kind of development um, in town. And all, all those, all those uh, concepts are addressed in more detail in you know, both, uh, both of our applications for the CUP and as, as well as the uh, dredge fill application. Would we, uh, would we like to move on with the going through the criteria, or do you have any questions I can answer about the state application specifically? Do we have, maybe we'll just start with general questions, comments on the proposal, the design? Um, yeah, may I may have asked a question. I wasn't on a site walk, but I did walk that site about five or six years ago for another proposal. So I don't think a lot of the natural resources have changed much over there. Um, are any of those? And I can't remember, so maybe you can you can remind me, Brendan. Are any of those wetlands connected wetlands, or are they all disconnected wetlands? Um, and by, by connected, I mean are they connected to another, a larger set of wetlands off site or out of the plan, out of the plan area? Yeah, all these wetlands are connected <clears throat> eventually. Um, this way, and this way, and then down. This was sort of a last-minute addition to the uh, to the plan set, or to the presentation, I should say. Um, <clears throat> you can see our site here. Uh, wetlands is wrap really around the property like this. Mm -hmm. They're also partially on number twenty-four, which there's we we're here a few years ago for a development, a similar development that was proposed there. And they, they, they extend right down to the Little River, which itself is uh, a few thousand feet f from the property. Um, and I've only walked around in here, uh, you know, not, not that much. I spend most of my time up in the, the developable lots uh, for these proposals. But I, I believe there's a, you know, a big network of wetlands here that is, that is well connected. So the reason I'm asking is that, you know, um, filling well, I don't like the idea of filling any wetlands, but disconnected wetlands fill is a little different in that if they're connected, my, my opinion, and you can correct me if I'm wrong because you're the wetland scientist, is that by filling in that, what we call connected, a portion of the connected wetlands, 
we are, in fact, impacting the rest of the wetland indirectly unless we do something to provide a way of, an, an, I guess, a, a, an artificial connection. Am I, did I make that clear, or I, I am I way off base here? Or? Well, let me try to answer uh, what I think your question was, and then you can uh, tell me if I, if I nailed it or not. Um, the way I usually present this, and I did present it actually in both the applications, um, because that's a requirement that you're to maintain hydrological connections. Thank you. And um, in this case, we're actually not severing any anything, um, so that when you have some wetland impact to the very edge, uh, that has a very very minimal, if any, impact to the wetland in terms of connectivity. Uh, to contrast between something like this and, and a, a crossing where you are going through a wetland with two large halves on uh, two portions on either side, you've then created a barrier, mm -hmm. a potential barrier for wildlife movement, for um, water movement. Um, and this is where, where the whole idea of uh, larger crossing structures, bridges and, and whatnot come into play. We're not doing anything like that here. Um, in fact, we are really limiting the wetland impacts to the, to the very edge. And in this case, uh, to a few of these fingers. And these, as I said, these, these are areas that uh, a wetland scientist looks at with um, the, the perspective to, to recognize them as wetlands. Um, after this storm, you would likely see water running down these. In the spring, they would be discharging some water. But these are ostensibly almost identical to the surrounding upland forest. In other words, they don't really function as wetland habitat. Uh, they certainly have other wetland functions. But <coughs> impacts to those uh, are generally considered uh, less detrimental to the wetland, and I'd say wouldn't have any impact at all on uh, from a segmentation standpoint. You've answered my question and my concern. Thank you. Okay. Brendan, I know when we talked about this at the sidewalk, that we're not affecting the vernal pool directly. We're going to the, cutting the buffers slightly at the what's just north of the vernal pool, the lot, isn't that the road? Is on the uh, north end of that piece of property that the vernal yes, be right so up there? Is that the road? Unfortunately, these plans kind of focus um, It says a lot number on my map that I have here, but I So the vernal pool is Up in that corner, in it, sort of? Yeah, so we, you can't even see it, but the cul-de-sac, and then we parked on the yeah. uh, oh. the shared driveway. It's meant for these yeah. two lots, this dead end. And uh, Garrison Lane, the historic Garrison Lane, runs roughly like this. Yeah, so, that, so that vernal the, pool is right here. Oh, okay, I'm in the wrong lot. So directly okay. north of it. <clears throat> is is a piece of property. You, you directly north of it, you, in fact, when we walked down into the woods, we for a short time walked on 24 okay. Continental, right, and then to 19. So well, directly north of it is, is the, the road, essentially, yeah. My concern is we're going to isolate that vernal pool, and I don't know that it'll be much good after 24 does something and you've done something and the road is there. Um, and I know we put buffers up, but um, those little critters need a little bit of space to run around in. Uh, and uh, the, the other, I guess, more general question I have is, we're, imp imp we're impacting about 80,000 square feet of buffer. Now, that's to me is a large number. It's almost two acres. And 
I'm wondering why, you know, when we set these things up, we set up buffers for a reason, and, there were, and I can see nipping a little corner here, 100 square feet, 200 square feet here. 80,000 square feet seems to be an awful lot of buffer to be impacting, and it, it, basically what I'm saying is the building's too big for the lot, in my opinion. And I don't know whether the company wants to consider something else, uh, but it, to put, I mean, it looks like it's kind of take the building and hold it up and just kind of drop it right in the middle of the whole thing and splatter everything mm -hmm. around. I, the, I, I don't know why we have buffers if we're impacting that many square feet. <clears throat> and we might as well not even bother with them. 80,000 square feet to me sounds like a large number. 2,000, 3,000, I can deal with. Yeah, that's, that's my like opinion. Two acres of buffer. I think the building's too big. It can't be repositioned. You've done as good a job as you could at putting it there, I think. Anyway, yeah, the, I'll be the, quiet for a little while. The no, difficulty of. good, Bill. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> the, the difficulty with uh, this type of development. Um, by design, they're they're generally optimized for other uh, for the for the trucks, <laughs> for the internal storage space. Uh, they're usually a, a big box. And, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> in this case, we have a, a the design criteria, as, as far as I understand, um, is you know for that amount of space. So I, I wouldn't be able to comment on whether or not there's a. A possibility of making it smaller, but I will I will point out that a, a good amount of that um, buffer impact is actually associated with the proposed direct impacts. So I recognize that this argument doesn't always get a lot of traction, but um, this buffer impact is you know its function are protect this wellend. So you know, you've got 10,000 square feet of fill, I think. Correct. In addition to well, the 80. Well, slightly less than that. Well, uh, nine and nine. 9,900 something. Uh, I, I think I, I excuse me. I think I know where Brenda's argument is going. <laughs> On the end, that the southern, the bottom, is that the southern end? Um, yeah, southern. So if, he, if the wetland's going to be filled there, which it is, with some of the 10,000 square foot fill, then... There's no wetland to have a buffer in anymore. The buffer anymore. It's a really, it's a terrible way of looking at it that I don't have an impact of the buffer if I've eliminated the wetland. But the practical thing is, in this particular case, especially at the, the southern end, where you're filling that wetland, am I correct? That's a wet, direct fill of the wetland in there. This is a direct wetland impact, that, correct. There's no wetland to have a buffer anymore. The buffer. I know it sounds sounds yeah, I know what back afterwards, but it is. And I recognize that, that there are a number of municipalities that have that or codified um, in the ordinance. Um, which is why I mention it because I think it does have it, it does it, in in my opinion it does deserve some consideration. Um, because it, it's quite a bit different than the bu buffer impact that we'd be proposing here. Um, this, this buffer impact is, uh, you know, going to potentially affecting the wetland that's adjacent to it. Um, this will not. It's, it's really these two fingers that really make uh, almost anything um, on this property uh, very, you know, next to impossible to do anything worthwhile. Um, and I'm, I'm not the, the engineer that the, the design um, responsible for the design of this. Sure. <laughs> and I'm sorry, I should have introduced um, Eric Weiner from uh, Altus. Yeah, I think it would be, be useful for Eric to talk about the design and I, I, it, this is a large building, and then it's actually a large amount of pavement. 
uh, roadway parking access around the, the large building. And a lot of those, while a fair amount of the impacts are the building itself, uh, another significant portion of the impacts are in grading and the roadway. So um, if maybe if you can talk about the function of the, the design from the, the civil engineering side and why it has to be that way. I mean, there's an avoidance and minimization that was briefly addressed in the, the state application, and I'd like to hear more about that as it concerns to the design of the project. Okay, for the record, Eric Weinrub with Altus Engineering, and I'm like the second pinch hitter here because Eric Sari did the initial design. He's on vacation. Ron Beal did a lot of the technical background, and he's actually out sick. So um, I'm batting, a, I guess, like a Brock Holt or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I want to actually go wind it back just a little bit. As Brandon talked about the lot configuration, and when Rockingham Econ Economic Development Corp created these lots out here, I think one of the things that they did is they made this lot really funky so that it met zoning and it had a minimum frontage. So there was no intention of access across that own lot. So that's just kind of how we got here and that they knew that there were wetlands at the end of the cul-de-sac. So the cul-de-sac ended in a po at a place and then they built into those approval drawings this easement through that developed site so that this lot could get developed so that we didn't go closer to that vernal pool and we didn't have to go through some other wetland system. So I think that's really the starting point. And so then you, so we're coming in off of that other developed site, we're coming straight in. There is that wetland finger. That is our only real access to the site because that's where our easement is. So we have this point right here. And uh, they needed a, a 95,000 square foot building. I think they actually needed like 120,000. And we said, that's not gonna work on this property at all in any shape or form. So it got whittled down. It's actually, in some ways, backwards, just because of the shape of the uplands and the shape of the lot that you come in and you see the loading docks first. So you have to go around to the office side of the building anyway. In the site's design to maximize um, the loading area, but also as the trucks come in, they have to go around the site because they have to come back up and then back in because you don't want tractor trailer backing over the right shoulder, you want them backing in over the left shoulder. So you can't have them come in here and turn around. So we gotta get around the building and that's how this end gets impacted, as well as it, it's good for fire uh, and safety to have access all the way around the building. Uh, we've done a lot of things to try to minimize it before we even got here, but things that we've actually discussed, um, you know, as, as Brendan said, we're this area we're just touching the finger, and I think that those that side slope there can be, um, you know, be, although it's disturbed, it does become buffer again because it's not a paved <coughs> surface and, and you don't have direct runoff from the paved surfaces back into that buffer. So once you get off that edge of pavement, that's a, um, you know, that becomes buffer again. It, it's not vegetated and it's not natural, but it is vegetated, but it's not natural and it, become, it can become natural again. This area here is our large um, treatment area to treat a lot of the roof runoff, and that's an infiltration um, bio detention area. We have another one in this area here, and then one, yes, it's right along this area here. And so we needed to impact some of the edges of the buffer to construct that. Um, some of the other things that we've talked about um, that we're going to do to the plans to make them better is that um, right now we have a site lighting plan, but what we're going to do is we're gonna revise that plan to actually really minimize the lighting on these sides and pull it back and put it back closer to the building so that um, the areas just off the pavement really are dark. So it, it creates more of that natural area. 
Um, you know, I think it was like 120,000 square foot building. So we had to force them down. They need this um, to be operational and functional because it is a warehousing facility. Changing the shape, um, there really are not many other shapes that fit in here that would have less um, I impacts. You know, it's like Brandon said, it, really your big issues are you have a finger here and a finger here. This is off the edge. Uh, we have looked at steepening the slopes, um, and we do have retaining wall here and here to minimize some of the impacts. Um, and you know we can steepen some slopes in a few places, but that's really only going to reduce maybe a couple thousand square feet of buffer. You mentioned the lighting, uh, and I'm looking at the page we have, page 33, I think it is. Um, is I think is a lighting diagram, but I, I, I must I maybe a blivet here, but I don't see as an indication of what's what. I th sort of assume that the, uh, the purple is the least uh, well, uh, lighting. No, the purple is actually just the um, foot candle, and what you can see in, in green is the the pavement. Um, uh -huh. But what you can okay. see along the edge, the way it is right now. At the edge of pavement on this side, it's about 0.8 foot candles, one foot candle. So these are the areas that we're gonna we're gonna scale it back. Same thing on this side, right at the edge of pavement, it's 0.5 foot candle. Once you're down to the wetland, it, it's almost zero. But we want that to be zero before we get to the wetland. So, so what's gonna happen to my little uh, vernal pool up there? The vernal pool it's have a nice light on it all night. <laughs> The frogs That's can read. Way over here. There, there's absolutely no. On. There, there's no uh, light impacts at, at the vernal pool, and and we're going to make sure that again, S3 and S4 get flipped to the other side to reduce the uh, lighting. One other thing, then, what about snow storage? Where, where are we uh, doing snow storage? Uh, that's going to be all on the inside. We have a big green swath all the way around here, so that's all going to be on the inside. So it's going to be... It's, and that would drain onto the roadway and then Dro into drain the... On, drain onto the, the roadway and then into the uh, treatment areas. Treatment. Okay. So maybe you can talk more about the parking areas on the left side. This is an industrial building, but it also sounds like it's an office. So what are the parking needs? And you have this green space around the building. I'm just thinking of ways to shrink the footprint of the disturbed area. And it seems like um, if you do actually need that full roadway around it, could, could that exterior parking or the greenway be reduced because any, you know, one foot of less of greenway would mean one foot less wetland or buffer impact on that, that left side, which has a, has a number of areas that are, that are impacted. Hmm. Um, so, as the third pinch hitter here, um, I don't know exactly how much of the building will be office um, and how many employees are needed. There it seems to be an extensive amount of parking. Based on this entryway, um, you know, this parking really does align that way. Pushing it in, you know, you would have a funky jog in the, uh, uh, in the parking field. We could look at pushing this a little closer up against the building on this side and that side. However, with a 95,000 square foot building, I think that, you know, it, it, it's what you guys want on that. It, I feel like it's probably a pretty tall building. I don't know off the top of my head that that massing up against the um, pavement and you're not going to have as much snow storage areas along the edge of pavement that it's good to have a little bit of green space between the um, the building and the um, the access way and I'm gonna you know there isn't there's some planting you know to break up the uh, heat island effect on on that area so 
moving this up really wouldn't impact on the landscaping on either side, but that's, that is something that we could do if we needed to, I think. Right. And what's the road, the roadway is probably the minimum, that's, or, or the max, you, just for, for semis, you need to have. Yeah, it's a 24 foot. 24. Um, for the straights, and then what we did is, to make for the larger, those larger uh, semi, we did widen out these radiuses. Um, so at this one, it's uh, 31.8 feet, and this is just under 27 feet. So on the radius, you want it swing out as that trailer drags around. And I take it you've probably played with different kind of ways of turning that building to minimize it. It there looks was, like if you there, turned it slightly, you could get out of at least one yeah, of the wetlands. Yeah, it, it's, it's the balloon. Mm -hmm. you, you just push on it in one spot and it, it pops out somewhere else. It, mm -hmm. you, you turn it this way and you're up against the property line and you're closer to the vernal pool. You push it that way, you're more into this wetland and you are you know have a greater wetland impact on this side. So it, um, I think that that has been massaged as much as it can be. Mm -hmm. I'm out of words. <laughs> I'm out of questions. Can I raise a couple then, do you mind? So um, typically when, when the Conservation Commission sees a project, the comments to the TRC have already been submitted, so they have the benefit of seeing the response that the applicant provides to the comments. Um, for this project, I wasn't able to attend in person, and so I submitted my comments in writing. I've not heard uh, a response to them, but my, according to Dave Sharples, who was present and presented these, it sounded to me like there were some design modifications that would be considered, and one of the biggest ones that we talked about was eliminating the, you know, the top, the instead of having an around the building circuitous route for, you know, for for the deliver, you know, backing the trucks in, that it was acceptable to eliminate that top road, um, and so I don't, I just don't know if that. That, if that has gone anywhere and you modeled some but my understanding truck turning based radii. on you know again um, there, sorry my understanding is that we we tried to vet that and that the turning maneuver in here to try to turn around in that area is is not large enough and so this maneuver really does need to occur so that they can back in safely. Again, so the tractor trailer, they do want to go over that left shoulder so that they're seeing the back of their truck rather than on the right. So that really does need, as far as I know, needs to stay. Okay. Um, and then some other questions. So right now the parking calculations, you're about eight spaces over the minimum parking. And so dropping eight spaces on that, um, I, I can't see the north arrow, but on the left side of the building, right? Yes. Yeah. There is a section of eight spaces that would eliminate some buffer impacts there. Yeah. And so um, it might be something to consider. Um, they would need, you know, they would need some relief from the planning board to have more parking than is required. And so Le that less could be parking. something. Yeah. Yeah. That could be something that you could encourage. So the that is something that. Consider. I don't know their actual needs, yep. and if their needs are less, and the board would be willing to waive that, I'm, I'm sure they'd be happy to get rid of some parking. But I just don't know their needs. Right. How many parking places does this plan call for? Sorry. Is it on, is it on the uh, there's 83. 83. Yes. And. Yes, it does show that we're eight over the required, so I don't know. I didn't ask the right questions yep. before Eric left. It's fine. <laughs> Whether it just, or not. It's just challenging. Uh, I know you're kind of on a fast track, and that's why yeah. the wetland permit was submitted, but it makes it hard for them to take action on the wetland application. Yeah, and we have to 
contingent on potential revisions. Right. And, um, and then just to go through a couple more items. So there was, in terms of, um, in terms of snow storage, let's see. I don't know if I called out which. So, so yeah. snow storage was shown. There was, there was one section of snow storage that was on the exterior the, the, of the parking. There's two sections, and those we, uh, based on those comments, I know we, as I had demonstrated, we are committed to flipping those okay. to the inside. Okay, good. All right, yeah, so again, I guess it just, there's some other minor comments, but... Um, but if it, the road was kind of the, the one I was surprised to see the wetland application include that because I had thought, my understanding was it was okay to eliminate, but it sounds like maybe you've done some additional analysis. Yep. Yeah, I wonder without that, you know, could you make that roadway on the right bigger, if you shrunk it on the left and the top, yeah, to get that turnaround, it just seems like a strange reason to build a building a certain way because the truck driver has to look over his left shoulder. It, 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 it's real important for safety with that. Yeah. I get safety is important. Uh, but are you talking about that white space interior? Is top interior right of the building. Circle? Yep. Yeah. If there are other, I don't know what they would be, but. Or I, even build just, a turnaround. Yeah. It is. It may it may come at the cost of some some larger impact on the right hand side, but could there be some impact more on the right to minimize that that, that top impact section if you got rid of all of that? I, I'm spitballing ideas here. Uh, to me, it seems like there there could be another iteration of this plan based on these comments that would be somewhat different. Would the tractor trailers? be permitted to put in reverse on Continental Drive so they could back it up over there. Oh. Left shoulder down the driveway. You know what I'm saying? So it's scissor. Scissor. There's, There's another, another property right there they'd have to back through because they're actually accessing through. Yeah. We get This um, is our only access point. Not directly from Continental because that this property doesn't actually, this portion of this property doesn't a butt continental. Right. And you don't want us to go through, through that there. Easement area. So I don't think it's probably that would be that practice. It's a good I like the creativity though. <laughs> but I shouldn't be answering the question. That should be <laughs> I'm not I'm the wrong person answering questions. Uh may I have another question, Mr. Chair? Yeah. Uh, the parking area. Uh, where's uh, where, what's happening to the drainage in that parking area? How is it being managed? My concern, number one, is that in the parking area, the parking area tends to pick up a lot of the fluids from cars. You know, oil, gas, uh, hydraulic fluid, brake fluid. So, and in the rain, it's going to get flushed. Where is it being flushed to? So it's all, it's all curbed, so it's closed drainage. Uh, this portion of the site, there's catch basin in this corner catch basin in this corner, and then it grades in the other direction, catch basin here, and then a catch basin here. Um, so those will all go, they have deep sumps and hoods. They're gonna have deep sumps and hoods, okay, thank you. So um, those all discharge into um, the, the catch basin, and then they uh, discharge out into either this bioretention area here, or up into this bioretention area here. And then the same thing as you go around the site, catch basin here, deep hood, um, and sump, I mean a, a hood and a deep sump, and then it discharges into this bioretention. Um, and then all of this area here, all the um, truck traffic, there's a series of catch basin, and then those come around and discharge into this wetland. I mean this bioretention area. Okay, so they're not going directly into the wetland. Absolutely they're not. They're going so through the, hood, the hooded uh, 
sump pump, uh, sump uh, basins, yeah. cash basins, and then to the retentions. Correct. What kind of bio retentions are we talking? Uh, what's their? Um, are they stone? Are they planted material? Again, I should have I should have read the plans in a little more detail, and I apologize. Apologize. For I don't have the actually. I have the details <coughs> here. Generally, <coughs> industry wide, we've moved away from stone. Uh, they get weedy. They don't do that well, um, and we do to typically a, a sandy loam on the surface, and it's a grass, so that it's easier to maintain. And thank you. Um, and on C8 is our surface, and what we do call out it's a conservation seed mix. So it is a vegetated loam, and it. You know, it, yeah, we've been designing them probably 15 to 20 years, and it's evolved. You know, oh, yeah. we, we started out with some plants, and then we went to stone, and then we did a mix. And really, I think that over this time, we've gone to a, a loam grass surface, and I think that really works the best because, uh, especially on smaller commercial sites where you don't have facilities people. A building like this is going to have a facility management team. Uh, a smaller commercial site, they're not going to maintain it. Thank you. What is, what's the removal efficiency is of these? I mean, in terms of nitrogen or, or other, these aren't considered as efficient or effective as a, as a gravel wetland? As a gravel wetland. Um, I think they meet the AOT requirements and then we also have Exeter, I believe, requires us to fill out what is that spreadsheet that's oh with the PTAP, yeah, yeah. And I, I don't know what I don't know what the numbers are. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> um, for total suspended solids, I believe it's eighty-five percent nitrogen and phosphorus is sixty and sixty-five. Uh -huh. I believe. Thank you. So yeah, that's a is what a gravel wetland is eighty percent removal or something on the order of that. It's a little higher. I, in, you know, I mean, we do have tractor trailers. We have. It's not, it's not a, a supermarket. It's not a retail operation where, you know, you're going to see ten different cars in that parking space over the course of the day. You're going to see, you know, maybe. The car comes in, goes out for lunch. You know, maybe there was four trips, but not very frequent. That you're going to see yep. that. You're going to see more activity there, but it's not, um, you know, a, a stop and shop or anything like that. So, have you considered previous payment anywhere? Um, no, we haven't, and certainly, if it came down to that, it would. It would not be anywhere in the main travel aisle because of the heavy truck traffic. It can't hold up to that. Um, if it was anywhere, it would be in the um, in the parking lot for the passenger vehicle. My opinion on permeable pavement is that it's a conveyance to get it into the subgrid. So um, we're meeting that same criteria by putting it into a um, bioretention area. And, it, and it's maintenance, if it's not maintained well, or uh, you know, you look at some sites, some errant vehicles go in on a really hot day and rip it up. It, it's not my preferred method. Seems to have held up at a target in Greenland there. I can take you over there as with a town engineer. Yeah, it's as permeable as this surface right here. It does not work. No, it, okay. it's held up, but there's zero permeability in that surf, in that material. Looks good on a sunny, a sunny day. Yes, it does. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> Relieve me before I have more problems. <laughs> before I forgot, um, I just want to mention in the context of the discussion about planting these bioretention areas, um, you know, that does provide uh, some buffer function. Uh, it obviously provides the, 
good water quality. That's its intended purpose, uh, which is a big one that the natural buffer provides. Um, but as a, as a semi-natural, these areas will have to be maintained periodically, but um, you know, they will be growing uh, at least some part of the season with um, native grasses and, and, and such. <clears throat> so this is a little bit of a softer edge. Um, additionally, that slope on the outside of, of that top section there uh, will also be you know, treated similarly. Um, I discussed with Eric before he left. I, I can't report on the, the other Eric. <laughs> I can't report on the, the exact um, uh, proposal for you know restoring some of those slopes. Some of them I think are uh, you know reinforced. I think there's some stone where we really get steep to try to keep the impacts down. Um, <clears throat> But anywhere where there's uh, a soil slope that, you know, there's the intent, and if it's not reflected this way on the plans now, I'm, I'm pretty confident there wouldn't be a problem in uh, changing that to, you know, like conservation seed mix um, that would, over time, be pretty similar to what the logged areas look like in the wetland right now. Um, so, you know, that's just a couple of things to, with the point being that some of that buffer, uh, some of what we're calling impact, exclusive of the paved areas, of course, is actually going to be, um, for, you know, some of that function is going to be re restored over time. Um, but we can't tell what that is from the plans that we have here. I think that you, no, I think that's a fair assessment. We, we, we don't know exactly where those are right now. Um, which areas will be seeded with the conservation seed mix? I, actually, I think it's all on the plans, but we don't have a sim, uh, uh, simply I I understood. The, uh, the plan showing the rip wrap areas. Okay. So riprap is going to be in this area here, um, and I think that that is oh, yeah. on, the only riprap areas on the site. The rest, um, these areas in green, are um, just have uh, jute matting to stabilize the steep slope. So riprap is just along here. Yep, you're right. I'm sorry. Yeah, page thirty in the PDF has, uh, has that plan. <coughs> and that's why that, because of that's even steeper? Yeah, we were trying to, you know, increase our storage area up against the, uh, the edge of pavement, so we made that steeper. And that, that edge is going into the bioretention pond there anyway, right? Correct. There, on the southern corner, it, it's on, along the bioretention area. Yeah. Hmm. Um, maybe from either Brendan or anyone that was on the site visit, can, I, can we hear about the, the actual wetlands that are being impacted? Yeah, so what's the best way? Um, <clears throat> so what, what we have here is um, <clears throat> a really common type of forested wetland um, in this area in general, but certainly down the end of Continental, <clears throat> Continental Drive. Um, it's red maple forested wetland. A lot of it's... Um, a lot of it's been logged uh, around 2014-15, um, not necessarily on this entire site. Um, the portions have been. Um, it's you know it's developed in uh, 
predominantly poorly drained soil. Um, this is very typical, although there are some well-drained soils on this site. Um, all the wetlands are down in really uh, dense, you know, um, glacial till type material. Um, hence the with wetland development in those areas. And it's relatively flat except for, you know, some small hills and boulders. Um, and this all drains um, roughly in a south, southern direction towards Little River. Um, you know, there's, there's not a lot of, um, aside from the vernal pool, um, there's, lot, there's not a lot of other exceptional uh, qualities to really talk about. Um, it's red maple, hibish blueberry. Um, there's no major streams. All of the drainage, you know, is, is clearly, if you look at the topo, it's clearly south toward the river um, or to other wetlands before it gets to the river because that's quite a ways away. Um, <clears throat> you know, there's no ponds, there's no major streams. Um, it's really easy to get lost in that kind of thing, um, especially now, because uh, generally the, the growth is pretty dense in these areas. Um, the vernal pool is, you know, I would kind of put it on the, the moderate scale of productivity. I don't have those numbers in front of me. Um, but there was a number of, of uh, wood frog and salamander egg masses in there. Um, <clears throat> interestingly, I think that the historic, it, it looks to me like the historic road has actually maybe helped that um, form by keeping that water in because there's not really good drainage across the road. Hmm. In fact, the vernal pool extends out into the road where if we had done the site visit uh, in the spring, you know, you walk through water uh, through that whole first section. So, you know, that's... We'd be, yeah, we'd be hopping along the stone wall that's next to it to yes, get yes. across it. Oh, yeah, and all you have to do is go outside yeah, of the road yeah. right here, and right you're no longer in the water. So yeah. that's... Yeah. You know, that's been um, over the years, many, many years, um, you know, for one reason or another, there's, there's been a, <laughs> it's been lowered by, by traffic through there. So that's, that's it. it, it that pretty much explains the, what the wetlands are like. They're, they're much, it's, it's much higher quality as you get further into the conservation area um, than, you know, a big part of that is not having been recently um, logged. You can kind of see what it uh, likely looked like uh, before that was done. But uh, the, the short answer is uh, forested wetland, seasonally, seasonally flooded, and um, <clears throat> saturated. So. Great, thank you. Yeah, the one in the southern, for the bottom portion that's sort of a hook shaped does act it's sort of a low point in between two hills and it acts as sort of a there's not a stream or there but it is sort of a, a, a low drainage point and through that through that area and it drains down into a much larger wetland area that you can kind of see beyond there that extends um, to the to the other properties so it it is, I mean, it's a large, it is, I mean, just from the site walk perspective, it is a, a large area that this building is going to take up. It is a, it is a full, uh, we, we had, we found the, cor the corners are, there are stakes at the corners, that we, we believe. Um, so if you want to go out and look at it, you can kind of figure it out where it is. Um, and they've done some test pitting. So it's, um, it is, I mean, the building is where it needs to be. And they, the wetlands themselves, you know, I would agree with Brendan, they're not particularly notable, uh, the, the direct impacts to them. But there is a significant am amount of them when you add, add up the whole area. Quick question. Um, you, you reported that the uh, is about about 9,900 square feet of fill. 
a little, a little less than 10,000 square feet. A little less than 10,000 square feet, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. There's also there's a, a pending revision right now. Um, I think, believe this ties in with some of the stuff that Kristen mentioned, um, where that's been brought down to, I believe, nine by about 400 square feet. Okay. Uh, so my question is, and, and, and maybe the question is for you, Kristen, is, is what's the threshold for mitigation on wetland fill? Is there a threshold of how many square feet kicks in mitigation? I can't. Right. So it's it's 10,000 square feet. Or if a priority resource is... Okay. Yeah, there's, there's some other things that would kick it out. Um, a priority resource area, uh, which are, there aren't any on this property. Um, prime wetland, there aren't any of those either. In fact, that's the only two I can think of. Well, the stream impacts could too. Yeah. We don't have any of those. <clears throat> okay, thank you. So, so this we're, uh, we're running close to the mitigation numbers. I'm saying, you know, a little bit here and a little bit here, swing to the left and swing to the right could either put us over the threshold or keep us under the threshold. It's by design, Don. I know, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I think you're right. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Some of the first iterations as Eric hinted towards there being um, were quite a bit more. Um, so you know, we, we, have, we have made some, some progress. Uh, we didn't start with 9,900. I'm just, I'm just poking fun. <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take the minimization. <laughs> just poking fun. <clears throat> Do we need to go through the criteria? Um, well, we're still on the, are we on the state. So let's. Well, this application. So we're going to comment okay. on the state wetland impacts. So our task here is: Do we want to support this wetland application? It's not, we would sign that we have no no objections. Is that the term? I'm trying to refresh my memory here. That's typically how you how you word it. Well, usually, excuse me. I, I believe we usually have three options. One is to uh, you are recommending uh, approval of this uh, wetlands permit with no objections. Two, you're uh, recommending it with conditions, and the third is you're recommending that it be denied. So I think those are usually the three options. So one is that, you know, we have no objections at all, go, f go for it. Or second is, yeah, but we have some conditions that you're gonna, that we're suggesting to the uh, Wetlands Bureau put in. Or the third is we're saying, no, not at all. You know, deny the entire permit. So that's, I think that's the choices we have before us. Yep, so. sounds good. So in terms of this, do, do people have, uh, direction we want to take. Do you want to open it to the public for comment first before you take action? Do we want to open it to the? Let's open it to the public <laughs> first before we. Are Are there any other public comments on this before we do make any sort of committee commission deliberations? Does it have to be wetland specific? Does it have to be wetland specific? The question. Um, it would. I mean, I guess our purview here tonight is regarding the wetlands and the wetland buffers, conditional use permit application. So if it's not relevant to the design of the facility as it relates to the wetland impacts, I don't think we would have any particular um, sway. Not to dissuade you. Or you could hear it and decide if it's something yeah, that applies I mean, if to you. Yeah, if you're here, it's fine. Go for it. Do you want to make a comment? Um, we are neighbors that live on Garrison Lake. Okay, please uh, oh. stand up and present uh, and just introduce yourself. 
we are neighbours that live on Garrison Lane, and so we are concerned. Um, we hike in the woods a lot. That is the end of our road, as it were. And so we are interested to see how much of the woods are going to be taken away. And it's considerable from what we can see, but we understand it's not conservation land as such. Um, my question, not wetland specific, is how many trucks are expected to be in and out of there every day? We are hearing a lot of noise on Garrison Lane from Continental Drive. Um, so I'm just interested to know how much is going to be added. Yeah, and so that that's something the planning board will discuss. Yeah. Okay, and that, I that's, believe, that was why yeah, yeah. I wondered. I believe it's scheduled in August for the okay. planning board. Okay, thank you. But that is an excellent question for the planning board. Thank you. Yeah, on, on our, our packet, it says um, that this application will be before the planning board on August 25th and that we haven't received the full TRC response yet. Um, that, that is a good point and um, you know I, I walked to the to the site uh, across Garrison Lane today um, and that we've been afforded that there is certainly other lots of other trails and surrounding town-owned property no, so no. there are other ways um, there are other trails and areas to be accessed that avoids this parcel I guess is my my sense of that um, so <coughs> Regarding the the state application, do we have a direction that we would like to take? It seems, I guess my sense is no one, we have some concerns here because of the size, the scale of the building and the impacts um, and some uncertainties regarding the design and potential changes. So there's definitely some un, un it doesn't feel s fully, uh, the pencil appears to be still being sharpened on the design of this project, is the metaphor I would like to say here. Uh, well, and I don't know how that affects our decision. Well, yeah. I don't mean to interrupt, but I'm almost on the agenda in the market. Thank you. Thank you. Thank um, you, yeah. Thank you. Mr. Thank Chairman, you. I'm never comfortable <laughs> about <laughs> saying it's okay to fill in any wetlands. Uh, but we have to be practical here. Uh, you know, is, is this project minimized the impact to wetlands, direct impact to wetlands as best they can given the site? And have they done so in a way that protects the overall um, resource of the area, of the, the project? So... I guess I'm leaning toward recommending that we go ahead, but I would be very open to hearing some conditions attached to the wetlands fill application. But I just don't, can't think of any off the top of my head right now. Um. Okay, I generally support that. Others? Again, I don't know how the rest, you know, this is one person's opinion here. I look forward to hearing what the rest of the commission members have to say. To dissuade me of, <laughs> if they wish to. Mr. Chairman. Uh, we're Are still we closed? talking. We're, we're, we're what? Oh, I, I'd had a, a suggestion. Or okay. <laughs> um, often we get letters for projects, not necessarily with specific conditions, but expressing concerns or suggestions. So 
Yes. <laughs> and you're in favor of that, or you're, or you're supportive of those letters, <laughs> or you're not? No, no, D, yes, is he saying D? I, I just don't... Uh, I usually try to keep my mouth shut, but I don't want you to think too hard about specific conditions um, because that's a little bit different than it works with the, your recommendations to the planning board. Sure, um, understood. Yeah, again, we, our recommendations to DES are just recommendations. We rec we were, and it could be in the form of concerns. It's actually Sorry. the Wetlands Bureau that actually sets the conditions. We don't. But they, you know, set them a lot. Of, they'll they'll take our input. I yeah. That's where the whole purpose. I know that if we have a, a well a well written motion and and therefore letter. Those those do get those are important for state reviews, from what I understand. But I understand that ultimately they're following their their rules and regulations, and not necessarily what we we suggest. Um, other thoughts? I mean, the, the main thing that, that seems to be in flux in that we've discussed about today or we would like to minimize is the, the pavement, the location and uh, the amount of, of impervious pavement, whether it's additional parking spaces, eliminating the... Again, but again, I don't know, I, point, point of our, that's not a wetlands bureau. They're not going to make a decision based on that. That's a planning board recommendations we're making. Yeah. Right now we're talking about, do we, are we comfortable, I guess the right word, with recommending to the Wetlands Bureau that this project, we're okay with this project filling 9,000 plus square feet of wetland in this project. That they have done with the best they can to minimize that fill uh, with this project. Well, I guess that's my point is that there are additional design considerations whether it be reducing the number of parking spaces or the, the truck turnaround, whether it's a U-shaped or is it a full circle, those would affect the, the, have they actually minimized the direct impacts? It seems like through that design process, whether it's, that could effectively minimize some of the impacts that aren't fully minimized right now. Again, I, I'm not an engineer. I'm not an architect. I'm not designing this project, and I, nor do I think the commission should design it. The commission needs to act upon what they have been given before them. That's, that's my opinion. I mean, I think we go, we're going a little too far here in what our particular responsibility is under the uh, wetlands rules. Okay, I mean, yeah, we can certainly yeah. just, we can approve it and, and with the assumption that this will get worked out through the planning board process and that, that makes some sense to me. Um, is, that, is that kind of what you're thinking? Are you looking to simplify it to just say we're concerned that they're not minimizing as much as they should be? You, or as much we as could, did, Again, I'm looking for, you know, some feedback and condi conditions. If that is a recommendation that we're okay with this, however, we think that the project can minimize impact by, you know, reducing impervious surface, that's a recommendation we could make as part of our recommendation. Yeah. But I think we're saying the same thing. It, am I, I feel like that's what I was the point I was trying to make. Okay. Um, well, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, but we're not. You we. we uh, without getting into specifics, which is, well, eliminate part of the road, eliminate parking places, redesign okay. the turnaround. Those are specifics that I don't think we should be, this we, we should be commenting on. Well, those we're, were we're just perfect. examples of. Yeah, I know. So, I mean, 
I'll, I'll, I'll leave it from there. Am I yeah, right? Again, I have no motions were on the floor yet, so. No, we're right? just discussing. This is good. Am I right that we're just considering wetland impacts here and not buffer? Correct. Yes. For this one. For this one. Mm hmm Well. Uh, does anyone want to make a motion or have other comments? Please speak up. Or if there's any questions about this process. Um, oh, so if we up? take no action, that's another. Uh, is that an option on this? Yeah. yeah. We, we oh, don't course. actually oh, yeah. have to. Does that delay the... No. There's, because this isn't a small, there's a different type of wetland application that I'm thinking of that. Yeah, I did, um, because technically the deadline for response expired yesterday, I think, so I did contact Evan to say that this would be on your agenda and that um, you wish to consider the application. We'd get, um, you know, get inf any information back to them after the meeting. So please delay action, basically. And he responded, that's fine. Okay, thank you. Yeah, the state has specific mm -hmm. timelines for yeah. their review. And it's very short. <laughs> and the, yeah, they, if they don't always line up with when you no. submitted the application to the state and when we have our submission deadlines, those can be off by a day and then we don't. Um, so in terms of the direct wetland impacts, Are there any other conditions other than sort of the minimization of impervious surfaces could we, that could be mentioned yeah. here? Could we uh, recommend to minimize the building or reduce the size of the building? I think to Is Don's that point that? earlier, that's a planning board. Planning board, okay. Um, well, DES may do that. Hmm? The ES could do that. The and Wetlands Bureau <coughs> could do that. Because I think it, that's my whole thing. Yeah, it's um, certainly yeah. a large building, and it's looking at the perspectives that were provided in the packet. It just appeared to be sort of a three or four story building, so it's significant. Was it that high? Was Hmm. Brendan, do you know if there was an NHB assessment done? Yep. Uh, there was, and um, it did come back with um, two that always come up. No plants, no uh, natural habitats. Wildlife came up with uh, northern black racer and um, wood turtle. Yep. Now... I'll, I'll tell you that we works a little bit differently now because of the the new uh, how this is intertwined with the alteration of terrain process now um, with wildlife this is if you have a wetlands application that is also in need of an alteration of terrain permit which we do need here uh, there is going to be a wildlife study, and NHB, or I should say Fish and Games review, uh, is essentially done through the AOT process. So I wow. haven't started as I would normally do back, you know, three years ago, two, three years ago. I would have contacted uh, Fish and Game right away, and we'd start talking about... Um, various things often related to how the drainage system is set up so so we don't entrap snakes or or turtles for instance um it's that's it's all that's all been sort of shifted over so that is, that issue won't in fact be in fact if there's some reason that the alteration and terrain permit uh, ends up going beyond when evan's review is due uh, that will be a on the request for more information and will just be held up until the alteration so that so I don't have any more information for you on that but um, it, it is 
usually stuff that can be overcome by making the development uh, less hazardous to those species. Okay, that makes sense, thank you. Okay, any other? I think I think we can motion to Oh, we look at the bottom that. one, a third one. There, there were, what we'd recommend that the wetland condition use be approved with the following conditions, or as noted. Um, we're actually this. It's not in the the memo. Um, okay. Because that's for the CUP. We're doing the state wetland, so we would make a motion that we have. Uh, we are. I thought that's what the top of page three was. Yeah, that's the next phase. So we, for first, we're doing the state yeah, wetland. Yeah, that's my mistake. I didn't yeah. include the wetland. Up. I didn't include It's fine. The yeah, we, we, we can. Okay. We used to soldier on with that okay. here. Pre okay, well, I don't understand. Well, that's fine. <laughs> I'll get the Same difference concept. between between yeah. this and this and this. Yeah, there's not. So, Don, do you want to make we're a doing the state one right now, which is yeah, on which is a motion or Trevor, anyone? <clears throat> I'm sticking that down. Anything coming to your mind, to your it's brain, there, Trevor? With me. I mean, as far as your lips. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a direct pathway; it just goes like right out of the right out of the middle lips. Um, I mean, as far as this goes, I, I, I agree with, or from what I've been hearing and seeing on this in this proposal, it looks like these these fingers of wetlands really have, you know, they're they're not hugely valuable wetlands as far as it goes. And I never thought about this way, but to Brendan's point, you know, the the buffer that surrounds those wetlands that would be filled is also, you know, sort of null and void once those little fingers of wetlands go away and much most of the buffers that we're looking at except for in some areas in the northern part which i would love if that was minimized um uh it is really you know either these little fingerlings of not hugely valuable wetland or buffer around them so i'm i would be fine with uh approving this dredge and fill permit um, as proposed. I'll second that. Okay, do we want to make any no recommendations or conditions of that? I think the, the minimizing pavement was the only thing we talked about. Again, I, I would push all of that towards the planning board and the conditional use permit. Okay. When it comes to the, the, the standard dredge and fill, I mean, it's, I, I feel like minimizing a f would be great, but. Um, Ultimately, it's, we can deal with it, address that locally. I feel like addressing it locally is sort of the lever of most leverage in this case. Okay. I'm satisfied. Okay. Okay. Any other comments? <coughs> All right. Seeing none, we'll. We'll vote all those in favor of approving the standard dredge and fill as presented. Say aye. 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 All those in opposed, say nay. Hearing none, the motion will pass seven to zero. Okay, so we've done One the down. first part of that. I don't know why I do the gavel, but it's just, it's, it's <laughs> feels good. Right? So, <laughs> yep, it's good. It came to a decision. <laughs> Boom. A decision has been it's made. Bill taught Boom. me to do that. I blame him. There it that. goes. Um, so now we're going to look at the CUP application, conditional use. Um, do we want to go through, I think at this point maybe we do want to go through those mm -hmm. criteria for the CUP, let me figure out where those are. Somewhere they uh, they've answered them, didn't they? Yes, they're in the go letter. Uh, Forty-eight. We got a forty-eight. 
Yep. That's a page number you? on your packet. Okay. I like I like how we do this now. This is good. Where do you go? I'm not there yet. Um, I don't, I've moved generally away from just reading them. Unless, do we want, we could go through all the answers. Um, some of them we may want to have more discussion of. I'm not seeing it on page 48. 49 is really where the answers start. 48 is just a list of those functions and values from what I understand here. And then the narrative of the project in relation to those it starts on page 40 oh, and goes on to 50. Okay. okay, here we go. So the first one is that there's... Yeah, 50. No You're alternate... 50 now? Yeah, is there no alternative design which does not impact a wetland or wetland buffer, or which has less detrimental impact on the wetland or wetland buffer is feasible. Um, so we talked about the constraints. And I guess this is where we have, we just discussed at some length, the, the potential for alternative designs which could minimize detrimental impacts to the buffer and potentially wetland itself. Mostly through the, imper the minimization of impervious surface. Generally speaking, does that make sense? Does anyone, are there comments on that particular item of alternative design? Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, we had discussed um, possibly minimizing the parking some um, possibly looking, I, I, I don't know how that would turn out with the, the northern road, but that was, that was brought up as well. So yeah, minimize, minimization of the impervious surfaces around the building and in some select locations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, then the next one a wetland scientist has provided an impact evaluation that includes functions and values of the wetland and an assessment of potential project-related impacts and concluded to the extent feasible the project impact is not detrimental to the function and values of the wetlands or the greater hydrologic system. Um, I think Brendan has described that. And it is to the extent feasible, I would generally agree with that, but are there other comments, questions? No, I think he's, it's been demonstrated that hydrologically the area is, is not detrimentally impacted. The Little River, um, Little River area. I'd be happy to provide an additional, you know, discussion on these items, if you'd like. Okay. Um, I think for now, I'm, I think we're okay. Um, the, the design, construction, and maintenance of the proposed use will, to the extent feasible, minimize detrimental impact on the wetland or the wetland buffer. Could I say you can make it smaller, or is that not feasible? They're not going to do that anyway. Well, we can, again, we're, we can certainly say it. Say it. We well, could. the question is that we have to think about, uh, will the reduction of the size of the building, is that what you're leading to? Mm -hmm. How will that improve the overall um, how will it lessen the detriment to the total area? I guess that's what you have to think about.
I mean, how, how does reducing the footprint of the building, or the size of the building, or the footprint actually, how does that improve the conditions here? You have less impacts because you pull in, you don't. Um, but what I'm trying to, I'm trying to determine what the impacts are, Bill. I'm not saying you're wrong, but I, right. Well, confused. I mean, yeah, certainly. I'm trying to there's impacts from this development. I'm thinking in the context of the of the condition, the, the, the first condition you are reading. Did you read? I guess <clears throat> is it maybe mine's too general at this point to, to include as a condition because I'm not saying how much to it or where to pull it back. Hmm. So we just I was just struck by the, the number of square feet in the buffer. As you point out, if you fill the wetlands you don't have any buffer. But <laughs> I know. That's Important. one way to cure the problem. In, in terms oh. of reference, we, the size of the building is 95,000 square feet? Yeah. Yes. What's the size of the other two buildings that are recently put in um, Unitil? Sub, you know, not sub, Unitil. I don't know. You don't remember? And, and uh, gift baskets? Yeah, I don't know. I know the gift basket, where, that's a huge operation footprint, but I don't know the size of that either. I have either. no idea. You know, someone gives me a... A number, a distance. I, I have nothing to reference it to, you know. So I, I don't. Yeah, I want to say it's on par with Unitil. I mean, the Unitil building was also significant, but I, I don't know. I feel like maybe the Gourmet Gift Baskets is smaller. It's a smaller. Ooh, really? Hmm. It doesn't take up the whole parcel like this thing. Gourmet is bigger than Unitil. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Here's Gourmet. Here's Unitil. Yeah, I thought Gourmet was well over 100,000, but I don't remember. So that one does, Gourmet does have a, a driveway that goes all around it, but it has yeah, it parking limited mostly to one Local. one side. <coughs> um, Anyways. You know, I guess my only, in terms of minimizing detrimental impacts, you know, I think of, you know, stormwater treatment, stormwater management, the bioretention systems seem adequate given for this use. Could, could they do better? They could with gravel wetlands, and we haven't gone into why that was design was specifically chosen. Um, but I'm, I guess I'm okay with, with this design. With, un, besides the, the minimizing the, the flow around the building, that we've talked about. Okay. Okay. So the next one is that the proposed use will not create a hazard to individual or public health safety and welfare due to the loss of wetland, contamination of groundwater, or other reasons. I don't see that as being an issue here. But I'm open to ideas. No, I'd agree. In cases where the proposed use is temporary or where construction activity disturbs areas adjacent to the immediate use, the applicant has included restoration proposals revegetating any disturbed areas within the buffer with the goal to restore the site nearly as nearly as possible to its original grade and condition following constructions. So, you know, the, the answer here is that there are minor temporary impacts associated with narrow areas along the base of the retaining walls located in the wetland areas. These areas will be returned to their original grade following construction and seeded with a mix containing native species, as, as was mentioned. Yeah, there, there was very little temporary impact that I saw. Yeah, it's... Right. 
The applicant may propose an increase mm. in wetland buffers elsewhere on the site that surround a wetland or of equal or greater size uh, and of equal or greater functional value than the impacted wetland. Um, that isn't really feasible. I will note that they are not touching a whole wet portion. Remember the Dog Lake portion of the property is not being disturbed. Yeah, and this yeah. site was subdivided and the town received with 200, 200 acres. Yeah, 212. Plus or minus um, of, of the surrounding land when this was in a sort of a mitigating factor for the subdivision. Hmm. Not that that's really our up to us now, but as some historical context that was brought up earlier. Um, okay, so that's, those are the criteria. Although, as pre presented by Brendan, I actually think, are these the old criteria? In the, we revised the the wetland criteria list, and I'm not looking at the official list. <coughs> um, it got revised in 2019, maybe. I think there's the usually, a, isn't there usually a question about they'll, they'll, they'll obtain all other state and applicable permits? You might be right. Number Drew, eight. Coming. Number eight. Yeah. <coughs> and that obviously they are we just reviewed the, the state wetland yep. permit. There's also another in that alteration of terrain permit for the state. Yes. And there's another submittal. Well, what I ended up doing in my letter, Mr. Chairman, was dealing with the uh, wetland related um, criteria. Uh, there's another letter by Altus, I believe. Um, that answers some of the other questions, such as whether the proposed use is permitted in the underlying zone. Oh, in the underlying district. zone. District. Right, right. And and I guess that one I could have easily answered. Um, and yes, we. But by, by we saying agree. yes, of, of course, we'll we'll get all the other permits. That's that's a condition of the project. Okay. So our main point here is the design as it relates to um, the specifics of the uh, the trap the, the driveway paved areas and unless there's any other comments does anyone want a motion Um, so I guess I mean I, I can say that we've reviewed this application and we re recommend that the wetland conditional use permit be approved with the condition that the the roadway and associated parking is minimized to the extent feasible. In order to reduce the extent of the buffer impacts. Well, we make it two different recommendations might sound stronger, one being the road and one being the parking. We could recommend that they reduce the number of parking spaces by eight or whatever, and uh, they try and reduce the road area to, to minimize the impacts. Okay, so we have to reduce parking and reduce the roadway yeah. As, yeah. as feasible to Sounds minimize with the goal of strategically minimize buffer impacts on the peripheral part of the uh, development. I'll make that motion to start with. 
Okay. Anybody want to add something? Anybody want to condition? add or comment? <laughs> Some of you land guys. You know. <laughs> no, you Don, does that work for you? Uh, I, yeah, I'm listening. Do you have any comments? Uh, no, no, it's fine. I'm good with you know what we're discussing here. Overall. All right. Okay. Somebody second it. You pleased him. I'll second it. Gotcha. Get your name in the minutes. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Madison. Okay. Uh, I think we've gone through everything. <coughs> We're good to vote. Yeah. Speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Did they, was there any abstentions? No, so the motion will pass seven to zero. So we will draft a memo recommending approval with the conditions as we just suggested to the planning board ahead of their August meeting. Thank you very much for your time. I'm Thanks. glad we didn't get caught in that storm. <laughs> <laughs> you put it out. So, Kristen, is there a due date or a deadline for those TRC comments? So, um, yes. So, because they're not due to return to the planning board until late August, they still have some time to return it. Um, okay. I, I could get what that deadline is, if that's helpful. I just thought you had some good questions in there, so. Thank you. Didn't seem to be addressed. Yeah, that was helpful. Okay, we are moving right along. Excellent. Up next, we have um, correspondence. And in our correspondence, we're going to talk about this letter that we received. Let's look at where this letter is on your packet. I don't know if people were able to get to this. It was somewhat buried amongst these other applications, but um, I did try I, to, in the agenda, yes, I tried yeah. to hyperlink. I know it's still not, it's still a lot of pages to scroll. But. Oh, okay. You hyper it in the agenda? Yeah, so if you can like agenda, click it. Each it's pretty nice. Mind blown <laughs> right now. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the past few meetings, not for it. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, oh, so this me. is 129 for the slow people like me who scroll. <laughs> um, Kristen, can you, do you want to kick this one off? I took a sure. deep dive on this one today. So uh, um, at the last meeting, uh, the there were, thanks guys, there were, Three voting members and one, no, four voting members and one abstention. Um, and the votes played out where the commission discussed um, and voted to recommend approval of the wetland conditional use permit um, and then discussed and voted to recommend denial of the shoreland permit. Um, uh, and the reason for denial was criteria A, I believe, which is um, concerns over water quality impacts. And so um, after the meeting, um, at the beginning of the month I re of July, we received a letter from DTC, which is the applicant's legal counsel, um, basically requesting that the Conservation Commission consider a rehearing. Um, and so what a re typically a rehearing is reserved to land use boards, so zoning board, planning board. Um, it's not typically something that, the Conservation Commission technically does not meet the definition of a land use board, but, uh, but you do certainly have the ability to reconsider your decision within 30 days of making it. Um, and so, uh, so it, your packet contains a memo from Dave Sharples 
um, that he sent to Justin, which is their legal counsel, basically saying he's reviewed this letter and advised Kristen that the Conservation Commission should consider this request at the next meeting, basically under correspondence. Um, and because we, he, he was basically saying we should put it, or the letter seemed to imply that it should be, the rehearing should be an item on your agenda. But it really isn't up to us to put an item on your agenda. It needs to, you know, it's your choice whether it gets discussed. So it is listed under correspondence. And basically, um, it's not a public hearing. It's not time for public comment. It's really just board discussion. And so essentially what you're doing is deciding, do you feel that, and hopefully those who weren't here, I did send in my memo a link to the minutes, um, and you have all of the application material from the last meeting. Um, basically, your decision here is, do you want to entertain a request for reconsideration? And what that would essentially do is start the project from ground zero. So anything that you discussed at the last meeting essentially is null and void. It's you're rehearing the project you're, as though you're hearing it for the first time. And so tonight, you can decide the you know deliberation we had and the discussion we had is sufficient. Um, we don't wish to reconsider the application. You can decide that yes, you wish to reconsider that application, and we would like to do so at the August Conservation Commission meeting. And I will preface that by saying your choice to reconsider does not necessarily, it's not a foregone conclusion that you'll deny or approve the Shoreland application at the next meeting. It's, it's like it could go either way, right? Um, should you choose to rehear it, um, you could use it as an opportunity to bolster your, your discussion and your opinions if you felt you know, something wasn't said that you wish was said. Um, and not to further complicate it, but you could choose to consider both applications. It's not, it, it's up to you to reconsider. It's not necessarily focused just on Shoreland. That just happens to be what the applicant is requesting. So yes, it's unusual, I totally get it. Um, and then at the, so this application is going before the planning board on Thursday. Currently, your memo to the planning board that they have in, in the packet reflects the recommendation that you made at the last meeting, recommending approval of the wetland, deni or recommending denial of the shoreland for the reasons that you stated. Um, should you decide to rehear the application, we would send a supplemental memo to the planning board so that they're aware that you wish to discuss those at an upcoming meeting. So, I think that's it in a nutshell, unless there's something, um, questions that you might have or guidance, I, you know, I guess In questions. the planning, I'll just note too, the planning board was CC'd on this letter. So yes. they have this, this letter from the lawyer um, in their, their materials. Right. Awesome. Trevor, I see some highlights. Yeah, I, I have highlights as I, well. I, I like, <laughs> yes, I have comments and thoughts. I, I don't want to dominate this discussion. I'm sort of the, you know, my comments were the focal point of it, and I'm happy to try to explain some of them. And I, I, I strongly disagree with this, the, the content of this letter. Um, and think it's it's not um, it's not the full truth. There are some comments made in here that are exaggerations and take out of context the the, the tone of our discussion and the, the whole entire thing. So, um, but I I would like to hear from others. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'm I wasn't at that meeting nor did I take a vote, so I feel very uncomfortable uh, having getting into this discussion, so I'm going to ask to recuse myself from the discussion of this, this potential action. Yeah. Coming 
little less comfy chairs. Um, we can start it anyway. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll dive in, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. go for All it. Right. So I, I wasn't at this meeting. I didn't have a vote. Um, I would probably consider myself lucky that I haven't been at any of the meetings pertaining to this project. This will be actually be the first, because I started uh, after the 2017 meeting that, that you all had. Um, so I actually had to go back and watch the uh, video of, of that meeting, going back through the, this letter here. And um, with all due respect, I, I feel that Mr. Passe may be misinterpreting or, or misconstruing the role and um, authority of this board through this letter. In, in this case, as was mentioned, the land use boards have, being in this primarily planning and zoning, actually have the authority to make decisions, and we are giving um, recommendations. our recommendations to that planning board. Um, so, so in going through this, um, I tried to look at, it, it was, this was a little hard to like parse out because there's a lot in this letter sort of laying out the evidence again. And I was going through this video saying like, do I agree with this? Do I not agree with this? But I realized that was the wrong way to go at it because it's really not about my vote at that meeting. It's whether or not, again, coming back to this point on our agenda, whether or not I feel that, that the process that was held during that meeting was incorrect and there should be redone. It really has nothing to do with my feelings on whether the vote was correct or not, or how I would have voted, because that was not part of what was going on there. And therefore, all of this, I would say 99% of this information that was presented here is probably great to forward on to the planning board for their consideration, because ultimately, we had sent our memo of saying that there were concerns that the location of the proposed development and the extent of the shoreline buffer impacts will detrimentally affect the surface water quality at Watson Brook. And they can weigh that against what is being brought to them through um, the evidence of the application and Mr. Pesce's letters. Um, a couple pieces that I did want to point out. First of all, it, I, I found it a, a little bit, um, I, I found it a little enjoyable that right in the beginning, uh, it, it's assumed that they understand the accurate reflection of the legislative body's intent when it adopted the Shoreland Protection District, District Ordinance, but then goes on in the footnote to show that um, the term mean high water applies to saltwater resources, which begs the question whether a shoreland permit is even required for the impacts within 150 feet of Watson Brook. Going to say that, like, yeah, the intent was probably not that, but you know, we'll put that aside. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, he goes, uh, goes on and says that this area is of the lowest value. And that, I mean, that's one of the flaws. I, I mean, I think you bring that up that he's, minimizing the value of this shoreland area and that's not yeah our regulations there's no hierarchy of shoreland protection zones exactly and impacts that that's explicitly not spelled out in if, if you want to take that um the shoreland you know just as written, that hierarchy is not explicitly spelled out. It doesn't say it, you should be valuing it in this order. There, there's nothing along those lines. So whereas, you know, Brendan during that meeting calls that a catch-all, and, and again, sort of calls it the specific nature of the lower end value of the shoreland area, you can look at it as another way in saying like, Actually, it gives us a very specific way of encompassing this under our jurisdiction. Now, these, um, these uh, perennial wetlands are actually under the jurisdiction of what we can look at, and we don't have to value them any higher or lower than anything else that's being called out in a specific named river or stream. 
So again, just something I wanted to pull out there. Um, there was, there was virtually, and I, and I quote from the letter, there was virtually no relevant participation by other members of the commission, subjective, but okay, in the deliberation and the, this analysis alone, which was singular, uh, singularly focused on the criteria listed in Article 9.3.4 G2A pertaining to, to impact to surface water quality, the chairman's motion carried by a vote of four to zero. That was the last sentence of the factual content. And I just want to point out here that there is nothing, nothing inherently wrong with that. There's no, there's no requirement for discussion, a robust internal discussion on the commission? Correct. Yeah, there, there's, there's no reason that all of us have to participate in some kind of discussion. There's no, as far as I know anyway, there's nothing that says like all of us have to be talking. I feel like it's completely within our purview and our power to sit here, hear an applicant, and put a motion to forward and vote on it without any discussion. There, there is nothing written in that we actually have to discuss any of that. He even goes on to say that land use board members in New Hampshire are permitted to consider their own knowledge and may base their conclusions upon their own experience and observation. So, A, that decision could have been based on our own knowledge, uh, experience and observations, and furthermore, it's 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 repeated that w that the board was ignoring uncontradicted expert testimony, and it, it, I think that that begs the question of contradicted by whom? Certainly not by themselves. So contradicted by us? We again are under no we are under no requirements to do that. That is not a requirement to, put, to contradict what they're putting up and, and find, uh, find who is like winning on one side or another. It's, it's up to them to put forward the, the evidence that they feel sways the board that using our own experience and knowledge will vote a certain way. Again, I, I feel that this letter really misses the point of what we are doing up here as a board and because of that just comes off as a little sore that the decision came down on one of the permits in a way that didn't favor them. Um, again, down in footnote number 15, the two, uh, two cases that were listed, again, planning boards and ZBA members, none of these are Conservation Commission members, again, missing the, the purview of this board. And that might have been it. I, my, my rant might be over. But oh, you were just going. No, you were ramping up. I was just ramping up. I thought there was something no, I else. Think, but I think you hit, I'll, I'll, I think you hit the, ultimately, the high points, and we don't need to get too pulled into the weeds here. Yeah. Um, ultimately, without thing. trying to go into too too tit for tat, and again, I, I think while this definitely brings up very good points in how I would view an application, when it comes down to the actual process of this, um, and and. And I would, I would be willing to, to say that Mr. Passe is, is, is someone that respects the process. I, I feel that um, th this was done in, in a process that is, um, sorry, I lost my thought. Um, I, I saw nothing, nothing wrong with how this process was carried out, knowing that ultimately our, our concerns or our opinions or our recommendations are going to be passed on to a deciding body, and we are ultimately that um, that counter or, or counter or or support of the evidence going to that deciding body in the end. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. I, I agree with you, 100%. So do I, and I don't want to get too into the weeds of every sentence on this. Um, I guess what it boils down to is, is it beneficial for us to rehear this? Is that, that's the decision that needs to be made? If we, if we want to rehear this. Yeah, if we want to rehear it. And if we don't want to rehear it, Are there other actions to take? But that's that's a side okay. uh, side note. Um, if we can get to after we decide if we want to hear it or not. 
So, Mr. Chair, I, I, I would I would suggest that we don't rehear this again over the issue of process, because if we open the door of, of saying that any time an applicant comes forward with with an application and they get a decision that they are that's non favorable to what they want and they feel they have they were they feel that the evidence wasn't interpreted in the correct way we should not be held to rehearing that until they are satisfied Again, regardless of how I would have voted on this, I have to realize that ultimately this is about process and that is just not how this board is, is and this commission is structured and how, how the, the level of, of decision making in this town is structured. Um, yeah, I would think the only, I, did, I got lost in the weeds on this one and I'm glad you guys are speaking up. But it seemed to me it would only be if they brought in some brand new piece of information that we had never heard. Uh, you know, that there was a, a Yeti out there or something, or some something that wasn't even uh, considered uh, by us. And I yeah. thought we considered everything, even if we considered it, in my case, silently. And, says, and the fact that... Uh, I don't. I probably spoke because I usually do, and it usually doesn't make sense. But it's still, you know, I I can just say. You spoke I, and you had some good comments, so I'll, I'll <laughs> well. The thing is, that. I mean, I I agree with what Trevor said. I don't have to say anything more tonight in this particular case because I agree with what's been said already. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe I should yeah, say. Yeah. And and. It, I guess my comment is that he repeatedly says this, we, we ignored uncontradictory expert testimony. Yeah. And that phrase is not fair because in all these, I just want to make this point that we are in a very difficult position as a, as a commission. This is not a court trial. We, we are both, we're a judge, the jury, and the defense. We, so there the prosecution. He presents one side. They present their case for why they think we should approve something. We have to interpret that. We have to question it. We have to refute it in some cases. Um, and then we have to decide. And that's a lot. It's a lot for all of us to, to synthesize all that. We had this particular instance I went out for a site visit in 2017. I reviewed it in 2017. I went out for this last month. We went out for a site visit for, over, for an hour, and then we spent the better part of two hours discussing this here. And I don't feel like I ignored uncontradicted expert testimony. I feel like I disagreed with yeah. the, ex the, the expert testimony that was provided that is clearly in favor of of the application um, and so could, could I have contradicted what was said by the applicant in a clearer and more concise way possibly I, I don't claim I was the most articulate at the end of that meeting when when this was being discussed but that said I did not ignore what they said I disagreed with what they said and decided to have a different conclusion than their experts provide that they provided and should we the only way that I see us having an expert testimony presented to us that could contradict what is provided is if we hire third party wetland scientists consultants to review these projects and present uh, an alternate mm -hmm. case before us. We don't have that luxury. We're not going to do that. We can, in certain instances, ask for third-party wetlands reviews. That's come up. It's sort of a hard thing to do. We, it's happened. Private interest groups have hired. Uh, I know private groups that are opposing projects have hired experts, and those people have come to present for us for larger projects. That, that wasn't the case here. So. Um, this, this, this phrase that is repeated throughout this document that we aired by ignoring uncontradicted expert testimony I feel is a, a misrepresentation of the process. 
sort of, to me, sort of said, well, wait a minute, we're coming to you with the experts. You guys, you know, some women, if we had any tonight, but we don't. Um, you people are the ones we're educating about this, but some of, I mean, some of us have been sitting on these boards for 30 years and have learned one or two things, and others are, are in that business uh, and have a background in in wetlands uh, science and that sort of thing. So I don't think we're uneducated that uh, we don't know when somebody's talking to us. But I agree with what you're, I guess I'm just saying what you're saying, Drew, which is that we disagreed. And I think with with a good background. I mean, it's, that, so yeah, I mean, in this particular case, there's you know almost 26,000 feet, square feet of shoreland impacts within within that buffer. I mean, I don't we don't need to get into the to the weeds, but they're basically the proposal was for if you weren't there, it's the same exact building that they've built three of already in the shoreland, and you know that there's a significant portion of that building, the parking, and the stormwater management that falls within the 150 and, and 100, within the, it's between 50, the stormwater management structure is between 50 and 100 feet of, of the, the shoreland zone. So to say that um, there's going to be, yeah, so I just sure. feel like, I, and I'm getting into the, to the weeds of this, but it, yeah, um, I feel that even discussing the, pro the again, discussing the project is really not, not the point here. It's yeah, discussing right. the process. Yeah. And, and the process doesn't call for that. I mean, ultimately, if we were to wait around here for, you know, Shoreland CUPs to come before us, where it says something like, you know, are, are you minimizing no? And we're like, well, that was easy. And like, we would, we, there's no point in us being here because that is, that's not how these are filled out. That's not how these are done. They know it, we know it. Um, and because of that, I, I don't see the need to rehear this, even with, I think, perfectly valid concerns about how that group was hearing that information and was was digesting it, and there was a disagreement in, you know, the conditions of that permit based on details of the project itself. Um, that is now beyond us. That can go to the planning board and be discussed there. Can I? Is it uh, time to? Make a motion that we not reconsider the application. Sure. <clears throat> Both shoreland and wetland. I think it would. If we opened it up, we would open it up. I, if, yes, we, I if we rehear it, if we rehear it, we. Yeah. Do we I mean, did we just ignore it, or do we? we make a motion that we're not going to reconsider i think it has to go into the minutes somehow yeah why don't we i think it it, it would i i think you should vote on yes. whether yes. or not you wish to right reconsider the application so i'll could i say one i'll make a motion that we deny the request for reconsideration that's better wording I'd like to just say say one more thing, and again, this doesn't really go to the process just so much as my observations of watching that um, that meeting. Something that that really jumped out at me was to the board's credit and the commission's credit, the fact that the alternative, again, that that whole situation was very convoluted. The alternative that was either previously permitted or the overlay of the larger building D over where the smaller building was, those alternatives were used frequently by the applicants to benefit the story they were telling to show, to prove a point, but was generally um, frowned upon when the commission would try to consider it based on alternatives. Yes, we were not. Yes. Yeah, the, right, the, the point that was made is the shoreland doesn't take into account alternative designs, but 
Yeah, there's it, not a it's a, it's a, right, there's not a, a different, there's a different standard. But in any case, I second yeah. Bill's motion. Okay. Okay. I, um, should we vote? Let's vote. All those in favor of denying the request to rehear. That's what we approve. <clears throat> okay. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? I'll abstain. We abstain. And John, Don's. And Don abstain. Uh, recused. 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 Mm -hmm. You're not, re right. So Don has been recused and Nick has abstained. So that passes five to zero in favor of. Six zero. One, two, three, four. That's it. Six. Nice. Five. Five, oh, and Five, one. Zero, one. So, oh, I didn't hear it. was an abstention. Um, so, re I guess regarding mm. this, I just want to, I'm not quite done. <laughs> because this is going before the, the um, planning board on Thursday. Um, and... Rather than trying to craft a response, which I considered um, to this letter, I, I think I would rather attend the planning board meeting myself oh. to be there to answer any questions that may come up regarding this letter. Um, I don't know if we'll have our minutes by that time or if anyone will have watched the planning board, but I thought this was a useful conversation. And I guess I would like your support that I could attend the planning board meeting to speak on behalf of the commission if this letter and its contents comes up. I think that's an excellent idea. Yeah, I think in my experience in denials of CONCOM, the chair is present at the planning board. So I support you speaking for us, or at least for me. Okay. I don't, do you think we need to vote on, I don't think we need to vote on this. Do you? I think they should vote to authorize you to represent the views that you've discussed here okay. and at the last meeting. I um, guess I would make a motion that you authorize me, to, <laughs> as Kristen just stated, to... What a czar we have. <laughs> <laughs> I second it. <laughs> okay. I'll abstain. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? So do we have Nick oh. also abstained? I think I should. Yeah. I should okay, so we have, that was a, a four to, to zero vote. Okay. Four to zero to two. To two. Because it the was The abstentions was being you. Trevor and Nick um, abstained from voting. Because he, oh, he was, the four was of us four were of at the last were, board. Yeah. Were the board. Yeah. Okay. We're okay. the hearty bunch here that has survived <laughs> these two difficult meetings. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, that that was my that's my reasoning too. Is sort of the yeah yeah. I feel I that that's a good idea. That's fine for that decision. It's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Are there any other comments on this? I thank you guys for getting through that. We do have a few other things. So okay. We, um, we have like a fun thing. Is he done? We're done. Is he done? <laughs> Is he done? Excuse me, someone take a Okay, property management. There's a couple more items under correspondence. A couple more items under correspondence. Um, I didn't include them in your packet because I received some of them after your packet was sent out, but we just recently received the alteration of, or notice that, and a copy of the alteration of terrain permit and wetland permit for the Rose Farm. So that project has made it through those hurdles. Um, we also received the AOT permit for the High Street um, PEA facilities, the faculty housing um, that you heard recently, and Shoreland 
received a letter request or a copy of a letter DES requesting additional information, um, basically just about impacts related to the property boundaries, not 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 a lengthy request. So, just wanted to, and then there were two other um, letters from DES, um, both um, notice of potential wetland violation. One was for um, Hobart Street. So this is basically them saying there might, we don't see a wetland permit, there's activity on site, we'll go and investigate. So one was for Hobart Street and one was for, I think it's Cornwall Ave or Cornwall Way, which is within the River Run development, which was formerly Exeter River Landing. So just a heads up on those, no action needed. We haven't been out to either of those sites to look at them. I have. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I have. Um, I submitted photos to the state for the um, for the Hobart Street project, and I did go on site for um, and and sent those to DES for the Cornwall Way. I did go on site. I did not submit any information, um, and I'm not sure who. How, how DES was notified of that project. When I looked at it, I did see from the aerial, this area was completely disturbed and you could see, um, you know, within, I think it was 2019. So to me, I had no evidence to say that this was indeed a wetland um, because it looked like a stone pathway or disturbance area. So I didn't feel comfortable enough to submit anything to the state on that one. But someone must still. Okay. Okay. And then, did you, there was an update on Garrison Lane? Oh, yep. Um, so, I did, so Garrison Lane, we've had some reports over the winter um, and into the spring about ATV use and um, snowmobile use, and so... Um, this is on the trail portion at right, the end. Right, Garrison Lane, heading into the Little River. Heading into um, the... So, yeah. I've been out numerous times. Bill came out with me. I really couldn't find the tracks indicating this had happened, but um, because of the number, be, because there had been several calls about it, um, I had um, Public Works put some boulders out there, and someone went out with a... Um, tractor and moved the boulders so then Jay Perkins dropped a Jersey barrier there um, that had been there through the winter um, I still was receiving phone calls that they're getting out there some other way um, but you know again Bill and I went out and I didn't we it, with snow on the ground and I didn't see that but um, so then this spring I had a phone call from someone concerned that the Jersey barrier was causing some ponding and drainage pooling on their property. So I had Jay remove the barrier, but I was concerned that that would be interpreted to be a sign that we're, we're changing our mind about uses out there. So I sent a letter, Drew was out, so I sent it from me, you were on vacation. I, um, so I yeah. sent it from me, basically outlining the restrictions on that property. Um, I heard from several people there, you know, thanking me for the letter. I also heard from Ed Butter, who said, you know, we we do drive out there and we have permission to do so from our our friend, um, but it's all on private land. And so I replied with the property boundary and information, and it may have come down to I didn't get a response back, but it may have gone come down to a confusion about who owns what property out there because I showed that the town, in fact, owns all of the property in that area, um, with the exception of some parcels. But everything north of um, the bridge, you basically can't get to any of those trails without crossing town property. And I indicated that the Garrison Lane, um, old Garrison Lane Road was, um, you know, uh, what's the word I'm trying to, was discontinued, discontinued thank you, um, in, in the 2016 town meeting. 2015 but anyway so I haven't heard much more about that but um, I do intend I had some signs um, I purchased some signs that you authorized at last meeting or the meeting before and I need to go put them up um, on site just to kind of re-emphasize the rules out there because police can't really do anything unless there's an explicit sign mm -hmm. even though we have a kiosk and it's <coughs> tiny words that say no motorized vehicles there's that. 
Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. That's a, there's a lot that went into that. That's yeah, that's been an ongoing area of interest. What about Rains Hain? So um, Rains did hay their property. I um, thought that I could go out there and document whether or not there was re-nesting of bo bobolink, but it, I think it's there are bobolinks on site, but I think it's too early for them to be s displaying nesting behavior because um, I didn't see any of that, so I went back and looked at the literature, and it, the hay needs to be a taller length, so it's not surprising that they haven't re-nested. So I'll keep monitoring that. Um, I did also get a request from Kathy Norton um, this, e this afternoon basically asking if the commission would be supportive of her funding David O'Hearn to mow again um, from the fr uh, behind the stone wall um, to the north corner of the property. Um, and so if so, she would be willing to fund that for you all. Um, basically what that does is make that path to the trail um, open. Yeah. I'm okay with that. I don't support that. Oh. Well, yep. Move, move the commission approve the request from Kathy Norton to have uh, David Hearn mow the uh, inside of the range property from the north, from the stone wall. To the north corner. North to the north corner. I'll second. Is that really just going to the trail, Ed? Yeah. Yeah. Somebody had already done it did some before the hay. Mm. Okay. Oh. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? None. Motion passes seven to zero. Okay, those are good. Any other property management? Any other trails issues? Do you have anything under trails? One item under trails. Um, I received notice from Unitil, if you remember, they came to you for a conditional use permit to replace some poles within that Watson Road power line corridor. Right. Um, and the portion that go, there were two poles that come in from Captain's Way that could um, impact the trail network out there. Um, and so, so, there was discussion of a reroute for that section and a request that they notify us when they're starting. Um, they did that uh, this morning, or I read it this morning, um, and they anticipate for the whole project they're gonna mobilize on July 25th, so coming up pretty quickly. Um, I did uh, reach out to Dave Short and sent him what my understanding of the discussion here was for the closure um, and said I'd like to go out there and confirm that it makes sense on the ground. Um, and he had said, you know, maybe sometime early next week in the afternoon. So I'm willing to extend that invitation to anyone who wants to come. Um, I think we're just going to go and figure out where we should place signs. So anyone's interested. That's great, and we could post about it on Facebook, and I'm sure that Dave will work with Toby and get it up on Fort Rock, right? Or we talked about all that, so. Sounds good. I don't think I can do t next week in the afternoon, but I don't know if anyone wants to. What? I'll go with you. Okay. Are you guys riding? All right. I'll let you know. Uh, I'm not ready. Dave, <laughs> Dave might be. I can meet you there. <laughs> what day of the week is that? I don't. I don't know. I uh, I offered. Um, I think Tuesday, <clears throat> Wednesday. I don't know. Uh, I can send that. Do you want me to send it to you as well? Yeah. Okay. If you would. Well, will there be signage at the trailheads too? Um, we didn't. But we could mention that, yeah. That might be a good idea. Okay. Like, caution, you'll need to reroute at this. Yeah. Yeah, so people don't, that's a good idea. Don't get out there not realizing that they'll have a whole section. I was disappointed to see that the signs for the trails that were set have been taken down. You know, the wooden signs they had the fellow making at uh, Riverwoods. Really? Yeah, and it disappeared. Mm. Like the Orchard Trail? Yeah, sign? and yeah. 
Mm. 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 Bummer. Right. Let's see hey. that. Well, that beats out as a May. I wonder if we should reach out to him. Is he still making signs? I haven't touched, you know, we, I guess before the uh, pandemic, I haven't been in touch with him. <clears throat> well, one thing I would maybe add is that the trail race, they did a great job of cleaning up after themselves. Oh. They did kind of an interesting way of marking the trails in that they took clothespins and like pink ribbons and they just clipped the clothespins along the way. So it made it really easy to get everything out of the way hmm. after the race. And, um, and he literally did it like the night before the race. Mm. So, yeah. I thought that they were pretty good about respecting what they said they were going to do. That's good to hear. That's good. Good to hear. They're, they're a good group. Mm. Okay. All right. Kyle, you have the event is coming up quick. That was exciting. Um, yeah. I have no idea what to expect as far as. Um, like attendance, but I feel like if it's anywhere from three to thirty, hundred, whatever, we will be able to make it work. <laughs> um, hmm? And so, you want to just for all those people watching right now at home, you can. <laughs> oh. you want to you do a sales well, pitch? Yeah, we're going to meet at the traffic circle um, right by Three CI, and then we are going to um, go on. It's going to be approximately a three-quarter mile. Um, walk through the Henderson Swayze um, forest. We're gonna pass by some um, pretty interesting rock climbing structures that I know my children enjoyed climbing on and maybe we'll, we'll pause there a little bit. Um, and then we're, there's three um, geocaches that we're gonna find. Um, we might, before we start, kinda make sure everybody's got the, the app set up and so that they can see them. And then um, on the way back, we're gonna hit um, hopefully three of them, and I've, I've found one of the three, but I feel like the, the two I didn't find, um, hopefully we can, with extra extra eyes and feet, we might be able to find them. But also, it's kind of a good opportunity to look at the different features in the app that can help you to locate some of the, the caches. And um, so I would expect it to take approximately an hour total, um, three quarter mile um, walk, and I feel like you'd wanna have um, athletic footwear, sneakers certainly would be fine, and bug spray would definitely recommend. Awesome. Yeah. All right, geocaching, 9 a.m. on Saturday. That's cool. And we did, um, although it's hard to ever correlate any of this to who might attend, but there were 28 people who clicked interested on the event Great. Um, on Facebook. So. Awesome. 23, somewhere in, in the ballpark. Okay, and then there's an event, is it this weekend also, at Rains? Um, the 23rd, July 23rd. Okay, so two, two weeks, two weekends. And that's uh, Raptors of New England. Ben Anderson had wondered if the Conservation Commission um, would be willing to consider an event out there and um, co sent a co-host request through the Facebook page. Um, it's from 10.30 to 11.30. Again, using um, On the Wing as their, you know, expert that comes in and they bring in live birds um, for members of the public to view. Um, and there is a, t a ticket fee, and in the past he's donated portion of the proceeds to the Conservation Commission. And so we do need to approve this as an event. Mm -hmm. And so park, he talked about parking along the Stonewall head-in um, as we had done for prior events. Um, there was one other question I asked him and I'm spacing it at the moment. So he is gonna, we're gonna do on-site parking for this? Yeah. Rather than, I park his, right, yeah. rather than crossing the street. And do we, does anyone wanna be there? I don't know, is anyone interested in this event? If we certainly could have a commissioner there, probably without, Paying an entry fee, we connections. I'd love to be there, but I'll be away. Mm -hmm. I could be. I'm possible, but I, I'm not. I don't can't commit right now. Uh, and Bossy said it was July 23rd, 10:30 to 11:30. Yep. 
I'm, I'm, I'm certainly possible. It sounds like something. It's a kid, kid, kid friendly yeah, event. I bet my kid would love raptors. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I got to tell them they're not mm -hmm. dinosaurs. They'll be disappointed. Okay, well, <laughs> I'll drag them along anyway. Why don't we send something out to the whole commission yeah. and as that gets closer, and we'll we'll sort that out. So let's just say, do do we have any other concerns about this event? Um, I think the parking was my main issue, and in fact, we got got an update on that. And they filled out the paperwork, or they okay. So so we just want to vote to approve the event all motion that we approve. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? None. The motion passes seven to zero. Okay, the minutes. Any comments on the minutes? I honestly Oh. Have you reviewed them, Kristen? Ish. <laughs> Ish. No, no, I did not. I did not thoroughly. Okay. Let's. Let, can we? Um, I haven't either. Can we? Can we punt on those? Yep. Sure. Um, is that okay? Unless someone has really reviewed them, but I, I that was something I wanted to get to, and I haven't. So in good faith, I'll, I'll ask that we defer that. Um, is there other business? Okay. Our next meeting is scheduled for August 9th. I can't make that date. I was hoping that someone else could help We, Trevor, Vice Chair. Um, if, assuming that if we do have questions about if other people are on vacation or if there's other conflicts, Maybe we we could all we could delay the meeting. I don't know if we have any submittals at this point. Probably don't. Um, but maybe we should send a poll out on that one. Just given that our numbers have been a little light and it's a summer prime summer vacation mode, um, might be worth getting ahead of. And uh, does anyone know of any conflicts with that? I will be away that week. You will be away? Yep. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'll be around either. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Well, we can, I mean, if we have to cancel a meeting, we can cancel a meeting, um, I think. Yeah, it's helpful to know that in advance. Yeah, so, so you that, don't promise anything. Yeah. Um, so that should an application come in, we could reschedule it if right. you yeah. have That's to. kind of more preferable just to not delay a project. Could, maybe, maybe we could send out a do, doodle. Is that what they're called? A doodle poll? Doodle. To say would, what we can, the week after maybe? I'd, I'd say it'd be, it's pretty soon. It'd be three weeks away. To, that would actually still be then four weeks to the next next meeting because of how the Tuesdays land. So maybe we could, although 16th isn't also good for me. <laughs> August is busy. Um, I was going to say, I'm away that week too, so it's... <laughs> Why don't we do... Poll, okay, we'll, we'll figure it out on Doodle. And as long as we get a forum or something. Or yeah, I'll, we I'll be available to chair either. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, all right, I uh, will, any other comments? All motion we adjourn. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we are adjourned. Thank you all for, for the record. That one. Fully supported everything you said on the process. Fun the rain I'm glad it came. Well, we're like still. That.
Thank you for tuning in to Exeter TV. Exeter TV is the town's public and government access channels, available on Comcast channels 98 and 22. Channel 98 is your channel. If you have an idea for a program, want to host your own talk show, or submit a film, we're here to get your content on television. On Channel 22, we bring you live and replay coverage of government meetings and other town updates. A third channel, Blue Hawk Media, is operated by SAU 16 and can be found on Channel 13 with all your school sports, events, and meetings. You can watch Exeter TV online at exeternh.tv, Apple TV, and on Roku. Find us on social media for extra content. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell to get notified about live streams and new content. Tune in to our platforms every other Friday to watch the Exeter Bi-Weekly Report with recaps of recent events, updates from town departments, and messages from nonprofits in your area. If you head to our website, exeternh.tv, we invite you to sign up to our newsletter to receive monthly updates about new content, upcoming meetings, and more. We'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch Exeter TV and hope that you tune in to our other content as well.